In this video, I'm going to show you how to add and subtract rational expressions. We're going to do this by starting out with an example from arithmetic, and then we'll extend this idea to work on expressions with variables also. So looking at this example from arithmetic, a half plus one third, how do we add these two fractions? Well, remember that we can't add fractions unless they have the same denominator. So our first step is to convert these fractions into equivalent fractions, which have the same denominator we need to find a common denominator. One way to find a common denominator is just to multiply the two denominators together. So we can just multiply two and three, and two times three is just six, and that can be our common denominator. So let's go ahead and find equivalent forms of these fractions that have denominators of six. So we'll start off with one half, and how we convert that to have a denominator of six is we can multiply on top and bottom by three over three. We're just multiplying by one, so it doesn't change the fraction, and two times three gives us a denominator of six. And then one over three, the one-third fraction, we can multiply by two over two. All right, so now we do our multiplication. One times three is three, denominator is six, then plus one times two is two, denominator is also six. Got our common denominator, now they have the same denominator, so we can just add the numerators. Three plus two is five, so five over six. When we have variables, it works the same way. We start off by finding a common denominator, The easiest way to do this is to just multiply the denominators. So we'll take x times y. So that's just xy. That's our common denominator. And then we'll convert each fraction into an equivalent form that has a denominator xy. So starting off with 1 over x, how do we make that have a denominator of xy? Well, we can just multiply on top and bottom by y. And then one over y, how do we make that have a denominator of xy? Well, we just multiply on top and bottom by x. All right, so now we have one times y is y over xy, and then plus one times x is x, also over x times y. And now we can just add them, y, plus x over xy. Here's a similar set of examples, except this time we've got subtraction rather than addition, and the denominators are composite rather than prime. We could proceed in the same way. We could find a common denominator by just multiplying the two denominators. Six times nine makes 54. But because these denominators are composite this time, we can find an even simpler common denominator by factoring them. So let's write these denominators as the product of their prime factors. Six is just two times three. So we'll write two times three in the denominator. And then nine is just three times three. So we'll write three times three in the denominator. All right. So the way we can use this factored form to find an even simpler common denominator is by looking at each denominator and asking what is missing from this denominator that is in the other denominator. So what is missing from the denominator two times three that is in the denominator three times three? Well, there's a single three here and there's a, th a single three and another three in the other denominator. So this denominator here needs another three in it. And the way we can introduce that other three uh, without changing the fraction is just by multiplying by three over three. So now we've got uh, two threes in this denominator. We've got a three and then another three, and that matches with the other denominator, which had a three and another three. All right, so now let's look at this denominator now. And what is this denominator missing that the other denominator has? Well, uh, we've got the two threes, um, but what about the factor of two? 
we need another factor of 2 in this denominator. So how do we introduce that without changing the fraction? Well, we just multiply by 2 over 2. Great. So now both denominators consist of a 2 times 3 times another 3, and that means they're going to be the same. Awesome. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So 2 times 3 is 6 times 3 is 18, and 1 times 3 is 3. And then in the other fraction, uh, this will come out to the same, but let's just check to make sure. 3 times 3 is 9, and then times 2 is 18. Yeah, that makes sense, because they have the same prime factorization. And then 1 times 2 in the numerator is just 2. So now I've got the same denominator over 18, and 3 minus 2 is just 1. Now this number, the 18, that's also called the least common denominator. It's the, lowest co it's the lowest common denominator that we can find. And you can also think that uh, the least common denominator is just the least common multiple between the two denominators. Uh, 18 is the least common multiple between 6 and 9. Okay, so now looking at this expression with variables, we're going to proceed the same way. We're going to factor it, and then in each denominator, we're going to ask what factors are missing. So in this 1 over x squared, we'll write that as 1 over x times x. And then in the 1 over xy, we'll write that as 1 over x times y. Okay, so now looking at this first fraction, looking at this denominator, we've got an x times an x. Is any factor uh, missing from this denominator that is in the other denominator? Well, we've got an x here, but that's okay. We've got x here. Um, but we've also got a y in the other denominator, and we don't have a y in this denominator. So we need to introduce a y. We'll just do that by multiplying by y over y. Okay. Um, now, looking at the other denominator, in this denominator, we have an x, um, and great, that matches with this x, but in the other denominator, there's also another x, there's a second x, and we don't have that in this denominator, so we need to introduce that here. So let's multiply by x over x to introduce that other x. Okay, and then uh, we need a y, but we have a y, so that all matches up xxy, xxy, awesome. So our denominators are really the same. They're just uh, x squared y. So let's write that down, x squared y for both of them. And the numerator for this is 1 times y, so just y. And the numerator for this is 1 times x, so just x. And we're subtracting. And now that we have the same denominator, we can just go ahead and subtract the numerators. So denominator is x squared y, and the numerator is just y minus x. And there we go. So there are our two uh, solutions there. All right, so now that we know the basic idea here, let's try out a more complicated example. Let's subtract these two fractions. So. Our first step is to write the denominators in terms of their factors. So let's, let's deal with this fraction first. This becomes 3a over, we've got a factor 2, and then we've got a factor b, and then we've got another factor, a plus 1. And let's leave ourselves a little bit of space between the two fractions in case we have to multiply fractions by things. Okay, and now let's take care of the other uh, denominator. So leave a little bit of space, then minus 1 over uh, 4. Well, 4 is just 2 times 2. And then we've also got b. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get a common denominator. So let, let's, let's ask, let's look at, uh, look at this denominator first and ask is there anything that is in the other denominator that is not in this denominator? So looking at twos, uh, there's, there's a two and another two in this denominator, and um, this denominator only has a single two. We need another two to match the other denominator. 
So let's multiply by 2 over 2. And then what else? How about the b in the other denominator? Well, that has a b. We already have a b, so okay. So we're good. We're good. So now about... So now let's look at this denominator here, uh, 2 times 2 times b, and is there anything in the other denominator that we need in this denominator? Um, well, uh, 2 and 2, uh, we've, we've got our 2 and 2, and then we've got uh, our b here, uh, but we need an a plus 1. So let's multiply by top and bottom uh, a plus 1 over a plus 1. Put that in parentheses for clarity. And great, now we've got our common denominators. Uh, so we can go ahead and and uh, multiply this out and we'll be able to subtract. So 2 times 2 is 4. Then we've got b. And then a plus 1. And now on top, we've got 3a times 2. That's 6a. And subtracting the other fraction, which is 2 times 2, that's 4, and then b, and then a plus 1. Good, our denominators match. And on top, we've just got a plus 1. So now we can go ahead and subtract the fractions. So denominator is going to be 4b, a plus 1. And here we've got 6a minus a plus 1. And let's, let's just simplify here. So the top becomes 6a minus a minus 1, distributing that negative sign over 4b a plus 1. And subtracting here, 6a minus a, that's just 5a. And we've got our minus 1 all over 4b a plus 1. There we go. So that's our final answer here. For our last example here, we're going to ramp things up a little bit. We've got three fractions now, both addition and subtraction, and we've got uh, some extra variables here. Um, but our first step is going to be the same. We're just going to write each of the fractions in fully factored form. So uh, this first fraction, um, let's write that. Let's write it over here to, to save some room. Uh, so three, we'll put our constant in black, and then we'll put x, how about red, so times x, and then y can be blue, times y, and then z can be green, times z. And then the other fraction here, let's uh, leave some room in case we need to multiply. Uh, the other fraction, 1 over, we'll put our constant in black again, and z was green, and then the other other fraction we'll write over here 3y plus 1 now 6 is composite that factors into 2 times 3 and then we've also got a y and a z okay so now let's look at each of the fractions and figure out what is missing from the denominators looking at this denominator here is there anything in this other denominator that is not in this denominator um, well, we're missing a 2. We don't have a 2 in here, so we better multiply by 2 over 2 to introduce that 2. And then a z, well, we've got a z. Okay, so that's okay. Um, and how about here? A, a 2, we've got a 2. A 3, we've got a 3. A y, got a y. And a z, we've got a z. All right, cool. Um, okay, now looking at this fraction here, uh, is there anything in the other denominators that we're missing? Well, here we've got a 3. We don't have a 3 here, so we should multiply by a 3 over 3. And here we've got an x, but we don't have an x in the denominator that we're looking at, so we better introduce that x. And, oh look, there's also a y that we're missing, so let's multiply by y over y. And a z, well we've got the z, uh, that's okay. Okay, and then um, 2, got the 2, 3, got the 3, y, got the y, z, got the z. And now we're just looking at our last denominator here, 2 times 3 times y times z. Um, so in all the other denominators, we have a single 2, we've got that 2, we have a single 3, 
we've got that three, we've got a single y, which we've got here, we've got a single x, which we're missing in this denominator. So let's multiply to introduce that x. And then uh, z, z, and we've got a z. Okay, so we've got our common denominators now, and it just remains to go ahead and multiply everything out. So the denominators are going to be two times three is six, and then x, y, z. And the numerator here will be two, one times two, and then plus, uh, it's over six x, y, z again, and the numerator is three x, y, and then here we've got minus six x, y, Z in the denominator and numerator is 3y plus 1 times x. And now we can we can go ahead and add and subtract the numerators because it's all over 6xyz. All over 6xyz. And now we've got 2 plus 3xy and then minus 3y plus 1 times x. And let's simplify. Let's go ahead and expand out that numerator. So we've got 2 plus 3xy, and then uh, minus, we'll multiply the x over, and we get minus 3xy plus x over 6xyz. And we'll distribute that negative sign. So 2 plus 3xy minus 3x y minus x over 6xyz. These 3xy's cancel, and then we've just got 2 minus x over 6xyz. And that's our final result. So now we know how to add and subtract rational expressions that contain different denominators. And in the future, we'll also learn how to deal with rational expressions which have uh, fractions within them. So like the numerator itself could be a fraction or the denominator itself could be a fraction.